Hey, it's Alex Ralph from Board Game Co. And another month has flown by. It's really kind of crazy that it's time already, but basically September is gone and it's time for a September collection update. What has left my collection in the month of September this month? And we're going to start off with one you already know about if you've been watching my reviews or channels or whatnot, but that's gonna, going to be Planet Apocalypse. Planet Apocalypse is a game that I put out a full review on. There's a current Kickstarter in it right now. I don't know if it's currently going. It's probably still going by the time you watch this video, but basically, I like this game, I did, and you can watch the full review, but if you don't want, and timestamps down below as usual, by the way, but Planet Apocalypse is a game that I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it a lot, I enjoyed the powers, I enjoyed the abilities, for me, at the end of the day, the reason I didn't keep it, and keep in mind, I said this in my review, I'll say it here as well, I still backed the Kickstarter, I still temporarily bought one of those $666 pledges when it came out, I was like, maybe I should get it, I shouldn't, I really was wrestling with this decision, but in the end, Common Sense won out, and in the end, I ended up choosing uh, Black Plague and, and, let's see, what else is there? Black Plague, primarily. I think the closest thing I was comparing, maybe Besieged as well. There were different games I was comparing it to in terms of deciding what would stay in my collection. And the two big things that made Planet Apocalypse not stay in my collection, the first one is the fact that I just really wasn't pulled in by the miniatures at all. I wasn't pulled in by the, the art style, that whole demon thing going on. They do have some cool miniatures that I am pulled in, but I would say on an overall basis, in fact, they have an update. Check out the Kickstarter. They have a cool update for one of those uh, Doom 3 bosses. Seems really cool. I like that one. But overall, I did not like the, the theme and the miniature design on most of the miniatures. And the second reason was a gameplay thing where... The gameplay felt a little too repetitive at times. It was, it's all built into that engine, just like any other game is, but it felt a little bit too transparent in how repetitive it felt. And that is why Planet Apocalypse is not staying in the collection in September. Next up from there, we have Grim Forest. Grim Forest is one that, well, I like this game. The problem is, ultimately the reason I'm go going to be getting rid of it, and I'll explain a little bit more about the game. And in fact, I should probably review, here's a little bit of a, the back here. This is a, I got a request from one of my viewers to start doing that, which makes sense really. But Grim Forest is, is ultimately, it's a game where, how do I describe it? It's a game where you're trying to get resources to build your houses before bad things happen. And there's going to be different things that happen throughout the game, such as the big bad wolf knocking down your houses, different cards that will affect you negatively in different ways. This is by uh, Druid City Games. It is beautifully produced, absolutely amazing. I mean, the game has sat on my shelf for probably going on a year and a half now unplayed, and it still has survived because it just... It has production quality that is insane, absolutely insane. I do recommend it. I heartily recommend this game. The big reason I'm getting rid of it at the end of the day is that Grim City, or Grim Forest, not Grim City, Grim Forest, to me, is a game that I don't think I would ever want to play it with anyone except for my kids. It's still good, by the way. To be clear, it's still a decent game even for adults, but decent is the key word. For me, I would only play it if I had my, my kids involved, and older kids are good. I don't think this is a younger kid game, but maybe like uh, 8 to 10, 7 to 10, depends on your kids, of course. It's a very family weight game, and it's very family friendly, but my kids don't ask to play it. And my wife doesn't ask to play it. My game group doesn't ask to play it. I'm always happy to play it. If someone wants to play Grim Forest, I'm always down to play it, but I don't ask to play it either. And I think what we have is we have a whole lot of people, including everyone I just mentioned, my wife, my kids, not my game group, but my wife, my kids, and myself, we're all happy to play it if this is requested, but no one actually requests it anymore. And so it's good. But actually, I will say the, well, the game that my daughter does request on a frequent basis is The Grim Masquerade, also by Druid City, City Games. Production quality is not as amazing, just because it doesn't have all the shiny miniatures and whatnot. But yeah, I think it's a great game. It's by Tim Eisner. Great game. Just one that nobody asks to play in my group, family, and all that. From there, we have Kingsburg, which is a game I've gotten rid of, gotten back, and we should put it over here or whatnot. Kingsburg. Let's do that box back over here. Kingsburg is a game where you are ultimately trying to get, you know, maybe we could do this. Maybe we'll do that so you can see it the whole time. Kingsburg is a game where you're trying to get the control or the, the benefit of going to different advisors in the game. You're going to be rolling dice, assigning some different advisors, and there's a lot of blocking that goes on. It's a lot of fun to actually go through it. The sequencing is a lot of fun because you roll dice, go to advisors, get benefits, use those to build buildings, get more powerful, rinse and repeat for five years, and then five ages, five years, I think it's five years, through each one going through a sequence of seasons. And you keep repeating that and keep building the buildings. And the buildings, the buildings are what keeps it interesting. I have in here, because I know sometimes when I say I get rid of a game, people say, but get the expansion. You're right, you should get the expansion. To Forge a Realm is in this box. But basically the buildings are what keep this game alive because you can choose different effectively tech trees as you level up and try to, well, win in different ways. And exploring it each time is a little bit different. And the expansion really mixes things up both with different events, different characters you can take, uh, giving you uh, specific tokens instead of rolling a die, which is a factor to the strength of the enemies each year. 
there are a lot of good things about this game. But similar to Druid, similar to Grim Forest, people don't ask to play it. I'm always happy to play it, but I'm not suggesting it, and no one else is either. And I had this for a long time in my collection. I got this years ago when I first got into gaming, probably 2013 or so. I mean, I got into gaming earlier, but I got this game probably around 2013. I kept it for like five years, got rid of it, and then had regrets and got it back. We played it once since we got it back. And then again, no one requests it. I think Kingsburg is a great game. They have a second edition available as well. It is very much in the genre of Castles of Burgundy, Alien Frontiers. It basically, it's rolling dice and allocating them to utilize them for different spaces and different rewards. And the art's gorgeous. I like the original edition significantly more. But at the end of the day, people aren't asking to play it. And that is often a deal breaker. From there we have, you know what, let's go to this side over here. We have Dice Hospital. Dice Hospital by Stanislav Kordansky. Kord I always mess up his last name, I'm sorry. Stanislav Kord Kordansky, I think I'm saying it right. But Stan is a designer of a lot of games that I absolutely love. A lot of games. He's a designer of Rurik, one of my favorite games. He's the designer of... I should know more of his games. I know more of his games, jeez. I'm blanking on all your games, I'm sorry. He's the designer of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, which I really enjoy. There are other games in my collection that I really enjoy from Stan that I'm totally... Endless Winter. There we go. Endless Winter, which is coming out soon. There are a bunch of games that Stan has designed that I have really enjoyed playing. Endless Winter, by the way, I will say, I am so excited for that game. I have played it twice now. Super... I'm a huge fan of Endless Winter. Stay tuned for that. But Dice Hospital, while I did enjoy my first play of it, and only play, I'll say, I didn't feel the need to play it again after that. I, I enjoyed the puzzle. In the game, you have this hospital you're building up. Every round, you're going to be taking in patients, and every round, you have to basically slowly rotate those dice all the way up to, effectively, a six. Once they rotate to a seven, they are healed. If they ever rotate down from one to zero, they die, unfortunately. But the, the fun of the game, similar to uh, Kingsburg, is the fact that you're going to be building up your tableau as the game progresses. Every round, you also get to take different upgrades, whether they are upgrades such as different types of workers that will give you additional benefits, or whether they are rooms to your hospital that are more powerful than your starting rooms. And the combination of utilizing those workers and utilizing those rooms together in different ways will give you better abilities, abilities you didn't have at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the game, you can rotate one die at a time. You can say, I'm going to assign a nurse to this room, and my red five will turn into a red six congratulations but as you get these different abilities you can do fun things by putting a special work in a special room maybe you could both turn three red workers up a pip as well as anything below a three will be up by there's a whole bunch of different ways you can get more and more powerful as the game progresses and that is a lot of fun but when i was done i kind of just didn't feel the need to play it again i just i, I liked it i liked the puzzle it presented i just thought it was good i thought it was great it was a solid game i i think it's worth playing um check it out I don't know if there's an expansion, I haven't heard anything about it, but at the end of the day, like I said, while I enjoyed it, while I have no regrets, good game, highly recommend, just don't feel the need to own it further. From there we have Isle of Cats, and this, this is a hard one. It's possible that this will be saved, by the way. I will note, my daughter saw that I was getting rid of it, she didn't put up too much of a fight, but she looked a little disappointed. But the Isle of Cats is a polyomino game that I, I like it. I do, I do like it, but it is a polyomino game, and it's, by the way, this is, I think, one of the best or highest rated polyomino games out there. So if you like polyomino games, I do highly recommend checking this out. I do highly recommend giving it a shot, because at the end of the day, this is my opinion. That's what it is. It's just what I liked and what I didn't like, and while when my opinion lines up with the general consensus, when, when the audience says, when the, when the mass, uh, you know, board game geek, whatever, says that it's a 7.2, and I'm like, you know what, that 7.2 sounds about right? I won't encourage you to check much further. Don't be wrong, it still might be a 10 for you, but I just don't feel the need to push that you should try something out. But The Isle of Cats is one that, I can't remember the exact rating, but it is one of the higher rated polyomino games on Board Game Geek. My own opinion, my own taste, does not align with this game. I think it's good. I think it's a solid 7 for me. But there are too many aspects of The Isle of Cats, and I, I put out a, a Patreon-only a Patreon -only episode on this, comparing this to different games, and saying why The Isle of Cats is a game. I'll, I'll include a link down below. It's Patreon exclusive, though. But I'll include. Basically, I, I went through why the Isle of Cats isn't a game that I love compared to other polyomino games. Polyomino games to me are always fun. I like just combining things together. And but Isle of Cats has that, but it doesn't feel as fun because very often you're not as tactically incentivized to cover every little field together. You're kind of going for specific areas, and so it loses that polyomino feel to a field to a degree. Not completely, but to a degree. Additionally, the drafting in the game I just feel is weak. I love drafting. Drafting is one of my favorite mechanisms. No, it's my favorite mechanism. And the drafting in Isle of Cats, I rarely feel that tenseness 
that I do in other games. It has that draw seven and then pick two thing, which is similar to Bunny Kingdom. But whereas in Bunny Kingdom, when you pick two, you're picking it from a lot more cards, so it matters. In Isle of Cats, I rarely felt like I needed to make any difficult choices. The choices in my hand and what I drafted usually felt pretty obvious. The tenseness of drafting, which is why I love drafting, was completely gone. And I wrestled with this one. This is the Kickstarter. It's got all the extras, got the expansions, got all that stuff. I did wrestle with it. But at the end of the day, I only have time to play so many games. And Planet Unknown was one that very much kicked this off. Meaning the fact that I play Planet Unknown, I don't have it yet. I put up a video on it, but I did play it on Tabletop Simulator. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I think Planet Unknown is going to kick this off my list as the slightly heavier polyomino game in my collection. Not Feast of Odin heavier, but nonetheless. And that's basically Isle of Cats. Uh, but again, I do recommend checking this one out more so than... Well, I guess everything. Planet Apocalypse is also really well rated, so give that a shot. From there, we're going to have a few. We're going to have Honshu and Hokkaido. Now, these ones, I don't know if I can really show the box that much. But Honshu and Hokkaido are... They're kind of like Sprawlopolis, but not as good, I think. I mean, basically you have these cards that you're going to be laying in on top of and or under cards to slowly build up your, your, your civilization thing over there. You're going to have these cards. I do recommend Hokkaido over Honshu in terms of the two of them, but you could really play with the variants in both. This I like the drafting variant more in this one, but you draft the cards, you pick a card, you add it to your city, increasing your tableau, going for different scoring objectives, rinse, repeat until you're done. It didn't pull me in. It was good. I played Honshu twice, Hokkaido once more. So altogether, three games between the two of them, and they're basically the same game. So any game I play three times certainly isn't bad. I usually don't give games a second shot at all. But it was good. That's, a, that's all I can really say. I just don't have the drive to play it. I think it does fit into a very specific window, uh, meaning in the right play time, if I have the right number of players and want to pull something out. Something about these games just doesn't really do it for me. I don't know what it is. I don't know exactly what, but they just, it, they're good. That's, I mean, this is going to be a common refrain for a lot of them, but but they're good. From there, we have Coatl. Now, this is one I'm going to have to figure out what my review system is, because this might be the first game that I have reviewed, said I liked it, recommended it, and I'm now getting rid of it, which is something that, I mean, I'm fine with it, don't get me wrong. I just think I need to do a better job explaining, or, or explain either explaining or coming up with a rating system. Because I review a bunch of games now, and I enjoy a bunch of games, and very often I choose to keep a game, and then get rid of it. I mean, that's true with every single... Well, that's not true with Dice Hospital. Dice Hospital I decided to get rid of after one play. Isle of Cats I've played five, six times. Kept it for a while. Both these games I kept at first, slowly got rid of. Grim Forest, Kingsburg, I kept those. I Meaning there's a difference between a game that I play and decide I'm done with versus a game that I didn't actually get that far. Meaning I play this, like, for instance, again, using Coadle as an example. Coadle is a game that I played it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. And I, I played it a bunch of times, I played it like three or four times, but now I'm ready to move on from it already, which is not necessarily a negative reflection on Coadle at all. I think Coadle's great, I think Coadle's great for the right person, the right fit, but for me, while I enjoy the puzzle Coadle is presenting, I gave it like, I think I gave it a total of like five or six plays by now, and I think I'm ready to move on from it. I think I still prefer Azul as the game in that genre, and I, I, don't, I like the base core Azul, not the others. I don't like the expansions, I don't like, uh, I didn't play the newest one, but I didn't like Stained Glass. Uh, the other game I compared it to, which was Reef, I got rid of that one after a few plays. Coadle's good. I think it's a very solid game. I think it's beautiful. At the end of the day, I'm just not really pulled in. Five or six plays in, I'm not as pulled in to play it anymore. And I think, again, I just think I need a better rating system to define these things. Like, maybe there's a stamp that goes like, love this game, absolutely insane. I don't know what the stamps are, but I thought Coadle was a good game. I still think is a good game, and I still recommend checking it out. But for me, I'm ready to move on from it. From there, we have Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is one that I talked about in my podcast. Uh, I have a podcast with Quackalope, the Weekly Quack. I covered Wonder Woman there. I brought it to the table in that discussion and talked about why I'm getting rid of it. But ultimately, Wonder Woman, I gave it one play, not more. Didn't feel the need to, so this is not one that stayed in the collection. I, I think Wonder Woman is excellent in terms of being a popular franchise that is a good game. That, that's where I think this is. I think it shines in that. It's Wonder Woman. I mean, people are going to be pulled in by it, and it's a good game to boot. But I still prefer Core Pandemic. I think Pandemic's just a better, smoother, cleaner system. And ultimately, that's what Wonder Woman is. You're going to be moving these cubes. Not really a good picture over there. But you're going to have this board over here. And you're going to be moving the cubes around that board. They're going to be bad cubes, good cubes, cubes that can turn bad. All this stuff going on in the game. And you're going to have different abilities and powers. Different things you're going to be able to pull different cards and utilize them. I like the system it's presenting. But it feels a little less elegant than Core Pandemic. It feels a little less elegant than I would like. A little less refined. And enjoyable. 
again, fully, totally enjoyable. If this is the first game, if this is my intro to gaming, I would keep this, I would play it, I'd have given it 20 different plays before eventually finding other games and moving on from it. I think Wonder Woman is an excellent game to bring people into the hobby, it's just, for me, all I really felt the need for was one play. And then lastly on the list, lastly on the list is a game that I'm going to be giving away, because this is Flick of Faith. Flick of Faith is a game by Awaken Realms Light, I believe, if I'm, yeah, Awaken Realms Re Light, I'm pretty sure that's who it is, there we go, yeah, just look at the back of the box there. Awaken Realms Light, Flick of Faith is a game where, showing you the bo box, the bo yeah, showing the box is not going to do much for you, but basically it's a game that's a flicking game. It's a game where you're going to, you're going to, it's kind of a beer and pretzels flicking game. It's, it's hilariously funny, it really is. You're going to have this mat in the center, and you're going to have different objectives of how to get your different tokens or pieces around the board, and it's all re very well done. It really is. And then you're going to draw cards and vote on the cards, which is my favorite part of the game, because you're going to draw cards that say, like, everyone has to play blindfolded this round, or everyone has to remove one of their pieces. And the cards range from slight adjustments to the gameplay to just straight laugh out loud funny. And I enjoy all of those. But I'd rather play Crokinole every single time. I have yet to find a clicking, a flicking game that in any way comes close to the fun that I have when I just pull out Crokinole and introduce a few new players to that game. I like Flick of Faith. I do. I, I would never turn down a game. But a few plays in and I just don't feel the need to, to, to play it again. It's Again, keep in mind, part of, this, part of this process when I do this video every month is I usually have games I've decided to get rid of, which are on a shelf, usually behind me if you pay attention. And then secondly, as I have games that before I do the video, I do one final look through my games every month. I look, do one th final look trying to see what am I fine getting rid of. Because if I'm fine getting rid of it, I get rid of it. There's nothing, nothing that stays if I'm okay getting rid of it. And Flick of Faith wasn't on my list of games to get rid of. But when I looked at it, I was like, you know what? I just don't feel the drive to pull it out. And I haven't felt the drive to pull it out since my first few games. But the reason this one's being given away, and I'm going to be, it's not going to be, it's going to be given away to one of my patrons. I'm just going to pick one randomly. But I'm giving it away because this was a gift to me, and I just don't feel comfortable, you know, selling this. So I want to pass on the joy, pass on the love, so someone else should enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, that's basically Click of Faith. And that is the last one of these games. We have, again, we have Planet Apocalypse, Grin Force, Kingsburg, uh, Dice Hospital, Isle of Cats, Quaddle, Wonder Woman, Hokkaido, Honcho, and Flick of Faith are the games that are leaving my collection this month. And that's basically it. Until next time, I'm Alex Rackett from Board Game Co. Let me know which ones I'm wrong about. Probably Isle of Cats, I assume. That, that's going to get the most support. I Maybe Planet Apocalypse? I don't really know. Either way, let me know which one of these I'm wrong about, which ones I should give a second chance to. Or Kingsburg. I kind of do like Kingsburg. In any case, I am Alex from Board Game Co. And until next time, I hope you have a good one.